You're listening to Remotely We Are One, a podcast to help inspire others to take their lives back from the office commute. I'm Rick, a passionate beer rep who loves the industry, but hates the commute. And I'm Colleen, a remote work advocate and consultant. We're going to speak with some of the top professionals who have managed to avoid the commute as they share stories from the most inspiring to the most comical, all while working remotely. Man, this sounds exciting. Let's clock in. <laughs> what is what is that? What are we looking at? Ah, oh, God, I tell you what, guys, I am just one hair away from jumping off a cliff. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Hang on a second. This goddamn thing. <laughs> you sound so New England, goddamn. That mean came out hard, dude. Are you from New England, Rick? Cuss I am. God damn it. <laughs> the fucking piss it, dude. Come on, kid. Go down to the fucking pack, you get a fucking six pack and go out and fucking crush him, that dude. Yeah, we both grew up together, uh, man. Ryan, we both right. went to high yeah, school. I'm in Boston. Together. I'm outside of Boston right now, but I'm from Boston. Oh, you're in Boston, huh? Yeah. Did you stop by Cappy's Liquors over on 128 and pick up a fifth on the way home, did you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jeez. Where are you from? I'm from Bangor. Cleem and I grew up together. We grew up in Bangor, Maine. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Good. Whereabouts in Boston are you? I live in Charlestown full time. and we spend Oh, Charlestown. Summer. Yeah. Exactly. The town. <laughs> You've seen the town. That was our neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and then we live in the summers down in Plymouth, Mass. Okay, cool. Welcome back, everyone, to another informative and whimsical episode of Remotely We Are One. I am your whimsical host, Rick Haney, joined by my co-host, Colleen Clarkson. Hey, Colleen. What's happening there, Rick? You're looking good. You got your hair I, all combed I, I, up. I feel I mean, good. You, I feel good. You do good look today. good. Yeah. You know, our guest today, he's looking good. He's got like this. This is going to be a great episode. It is. We have blue, and he's got like this sky blue. I mean, I'm yeah. pretty geeked it, It's a motif. It's a matching motif. I'm excited for this episode. I'm in my kid's room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what we're here to talk about. You got to adapt. You got to adapt. That's right. That's right. So let's talk a little bit about our guest. Don't mention who he is because I want the big reveal. But I'm excited to learn from this gentleman. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect. All right, so we got a couple of points here. We learned a whole bunch of shit about our guest today. I mean, we're going to have to comb through this pre-show notes because there's so much good shit in here. Okay, so first off, he was born in Canada, but uh -huh. he was raised in Boston, so he's a Bostonian. He's raised oh. in Beantown. He's a Bostonian. Dude. Oh, get after it, kid. <laughs> get after it, dude. Um, <laughs> doesn't it feel like we're getting a lot of Northeasterners somehow? It seems that way. It really does. I mean, we're, we're located in the southeast, getting a ton of northeastern, whatever. Yeah. Shout out Bean Town. Um, <laughs> he, he's also a co-owner of an oyster farm. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Ah. Yep, oysters. Okay. I'm interested in hearing more about this. Yeah, they're slippery and like meh, meh. <laughs> People love them. People love them. <laughs> uh, oh, this is something that is just I still can't even get over this. He had. A book club, right? A book club for men only, a men only book club that was interesting. Featured in Playboy. It was featured in Playboy, Rick. It got so big, what? it got picked up by The New Yorker, right? Oh boy. The name of the book club was called Scorpion, bro. It was called oh, Scorpion. Oh, that is. Take that, Cobra fire. Kai. Take that, that is Cobra fire. Cobra Kai. Damn. Oh, oh yeah. Playboy. That shit so stings. Some of you young bucks, Playboy is this magazine. It's great for the articles. So yes. anyway, our guest was also, check this out. So he actually knows a few things. He knows a few things. He's the former VP at Envision, where he helped oh. scale them from zero to 800 remote employees. This is all before the pandemic, man, years. Envision is kind of like, I don't know, GitLab before and before Gila, you know what I mean? Like Envision's the OGs of remote work, right? just so you know. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, he also does a little consulting on the side. Can't send you to the website quite yet. He was named as a top remote work influencer by remote.com in that great report. Shout out to remote.com. Last but not least, he is now the chief revenue officer for Catalog. Viewers, listeners, please give a warm welcome to Ryan Burke. 
Welcome aboard, Ryan. Thanks, guys. Yes. I appreciate it. Let's I appreciate it. That's quite the intro. I like yes. that. Yeah. I That's like what it. I live for. I want to be a hype man. Yeah. We want to give credit where credit is due. You've done a lot. And you've seen some shit. I have no doubt. Yeah. Definitely seen, seen some Dating shit. myself, but yes. Yeah. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. So we talked a little bit about your experiences in the intro. Yep. Let's dive a little bit deeper. What led to where you are now? What was the initial spark that kind of ignited you into this industry, you know, before Envision and all that? Yeah. You know, I went to school in Boston, worked for the Olympics for a year after I graduated in Atlanta. Um, Atlanta will never see the Olympics again, let's just say, based on that situation. <laughs> yeah. Don't bid. Um, and then I went out west, jumped in a car with a buddy, got into the finance gig. Um, did uh, was with Goldman Sachs. I just realized finance was not my thing mm -hmm. and just wasn't where I wanted to be. And so I took it as an opportunity to move back to the East Coast and got into the tech game. And I've been in tech and the Boston tech scene ever since. And, you know, sort of grew my career. Then I got into the remote thing with Envision. Again, this was before remote was cool. And hmm. I joined, there was about 30 people at Envision. Clark, the CEO founder, was like, we're fully remote, but you're coming on to run the sales team. If you want to build an office in Boston for sales, because at that point, people were like, all right, maybe remote works. What year is this roughly, Ryan? This is like 2014, probably. Wow. Wow. And he's like, you know, they're like, maybe remote works, but there's no way it's going to work for sales. Come on. Yes. Everybody needs the ring and the gong and the listening to each other on the calls and the bullpen and all that nonsense. And he's like, go open an office in Boston, a sales office. And so okay. I had a commercial real estate guy who was looking at offices. But then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to create something that's counter to what the culture is that has been established here. And so interesting, interesting. Was that your call, Ryan? It was my call. I had the ability to open an office and pull the trigger. And then there were people on the team that wanted it, especially then, you know, when people you're trying to hire folks. Yes. Hey, you want to work remote? They're like, no, I want a ping pong table, you know, like. Right, right. In Boston, I mean, you're in the mecca of education yeah. you're in the mecca of, of one of the tech spots so like all the tech companies at that time great yep. huge offices former dot-com area so i totally get it obviously there was something that made you pause do you remember what it was that said you know what i'm gonna do this thing remotely was there a specific incident was there pricing was it the cost what was it if you can recall yeah um, when i started i inherited three salespeople. okay and none of them were in boston Oh. And I started talking about, you know, oh, we got to build a Boston office. We're going to build a big BDR organization. <laughs> None of them are in Boston. And you could just see them reacting, being like, really? And, you know, I needed to build a relationship with those early employees. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. And then I started, when I was hiring, I started to find some really good talent. There and it is. Like somebody referred me to a guy in Charleston, South Carolina. I was like, this guy's unbelievable. And, barely affordable compared to New York or San Francisco. Yes. And I was like, all right, you know what? The signals are there. I'm going to build a remote team because that's also aligned with, you know, we didn't have any headquarters. There was nothing. Like there was no office at all at that time. Mm. And so, yeah, I just made the decision to just go fully remote. We did sprinkle in some WeWorks as we scaled. So you kind of got a little bit of the best of both worlds. Yeah. Uh, Makes sense. But it was, uh, it was cool because, you know, we had this, you know, when I first started at Envision, like we wanted to make sure that you could still have interpersonal interactions. So everybody got an unlimited Starbucks card. And oh, wow. so okay. like, hey, maybe you're in a place where there's not a WeWork or something, but you want to go out and have some coffee, did a, whatever, and, you know, work someplace more social. So everybody got an unlimited Starbucks card until some BDRs in San Francisco <laughs> discovered that you could use those at certain grocery stores. And uh, really, got drunk really? at a company party and told us about their spending habits. That was the end of that book. Uh, Holy shit. But Come even on, y'all to told on This yourself? is why we can't have nice things. Y'all told I mean, on yourself? Keep it I know, to yourself. I know. Come but on even, now. But even to the day I laughed, like everybody had a card that you could spend $100 a month at a coffee shop. Super cool. For some of our listeners who may not be aware, like Envision at that time was 
the technology was amazing. So Envision's kind of like Figma before Figma was there and yep. before Adobe XD and you know being yep. able to see a mock-up from a designer on a live website was just mind blown. So the designer could design it, put it up on this link and it would actually work like it was a website. It was just actually just a mock-up for you to approve with your clients and work through. So it was really groundbreaking technology. And I remember all of yeah. the content you all were putting out about remote work. So when we were kind of joking about, ah, oh, they're GitLab before the GitLab, what we mean by that is, <laughs> is in that thought leadership at that time, Envision yep. was were one of the leaders, and you know, still till today, they talk a lot about remote yep. work. So kudos to you, Ryan, for being a part of that. Kind of transitioning from Envision, now that you had that experience and you were there for a little while, yep. How did that change your outlook on what you wanted to do next? I mean, at some point, yeah. you know, in any position, you kind of grow out of that role, and um, yep. you're looking for the next task. How did that experience working? remotely and actually working remotely with one of the better companies to do it. Yeah. How did it shift your mindset, right? Yeah. There were sort of two chapters that envisioned, well, you know, I, I built the go to market for the first three years. Then I moved to London and, you know, remote company, why do you need to be in London? And, but, you know, I built the international sort of manage everything outside of North and South America. And that was just an incredibly rewarding experience going over there with my wife, my two sons. We lived in London for three years. And we had a fully remote, I was working with people from all over the world that, you know, resources in India, people in APAC, and just seeing all those different cultures that, you know, when I left Envision after five and a half years, I knew one that I wasn't going back to an office, even though like at my previous jobs, like I was the office guy, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. I was yeah. the guy. I have a feeling we all three of us were office yeah, people. Like, like, like people yeah, think, sure. oh, you Kaleem, you don't like the office. It's like, you don't know. I love the office. Yeah, exactly. Who doesn't love the high five and, you know, blow farts and walk away? Yeah. yeah. You know, I loved all that stuff. and But I knew I wasn't going to go back to being in the office. And so when I was looking for new opportunities, I was looking for something that was in the tech space, but also was supporting this new distributed environment and catalog, which is the centralized you know, Work Hub does exactly that. And I felt a lot of the pain points. I don't want to get into a pitch, but I felt a lot of the pain points of being in a remote world. Right. Can't find where any information is. Boom. You don't, you don't get to know people. Culture suffers. You don't know how engaged employees are. All of that crap was because of, you know, some of the side effects of remote work. And, you know, so Catalog's fairly unique position to address those. And so I knew I wanted to do something that stayed in the theme of remote work and helping people. And I learned a ton at Envision. And there was all sorts of things that we did for culture and behaviors and mental health and all these different weird tricks and things we did at Envision that helped me kind of translate into the next phase of my career. Awesome. You mentioned that you'll never go back to an office. Um, one of the questions I always, uh, and, and everybody answers this differently, but I'm always interested in learning why so many managers have a hard time with this new shift to remote work. And obviously yeah. everybody would love to work from home, right? But there seems to be so much resistance at the managerial level that it's almost working against the managers who are trying to keep mm. it, you know, people right. coming in the office. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I mean, I think... Well, you know, we actually just did some research, third-party research that we did with GitLab that showed that 73% of C-level execs enjoy flexible work. Like themselves, like themselves. Right. Themselves. And it's only like 24% of the junior folks, 24 to 30% in that range, depending on the level. So yeah, there's an averseness to having people remote, but the privileged C-levels are the ones enjoying the benefit. Mm. And mm. Oh. there's some irony there. And yeah. so, you know, and I think that points to sort of a cultural, you know, that they haven't established the right cultural norms at the company to give those less experienced folks the freedom, the comfort, and the safety to work remote. And so it doesn't really answer your question directly. Like I do feel like managers. Um, to some extent, they just want control and visibility, but I think that's so dated. Yeah. And it doesn't like yeah. it, it doesn't even matter if they want that. Employees don't <laughs> want that anymore, right? So right. Like, they're out of a fucking job if that's what they're going to mandate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Go ahead, mandate people going to the office. See how your hiring works. Like, yeah. Uh, mm. 
So I think it's a little different. And make no mistake, there's a time for interpersonal like, interactions. Yes. Like that's incredibly important. But it just mm-hmm. doesn't have to be on a day to day basis in a cubicle. Yeah, I think where we're all heading is I no longer need to go to the office to do work. And yep. actually, I prefer not to go into the office to do work if my environment at home allows me to. Because I, I think a lot of times we forget right. about the population that doesn't have a great sure. spot at home or a great spot yep. wherever to work. So um, I just kind of want to notice that. But like, <clears throat> it seems to me most people want to do their focus work in a focus opportunity, they want to go in the office to connect. And that's what people are missing is that connection space, you know? Right, Um, exactly. And it does make those times you get together, you know, they're optimized. Like at Envision, you know, we would hold these annual events of 800 people. The amount of hugs at those events (laughs) was like through the roof. You know what I mean? It was like, people hadn't met each other and people had relationships, they never met each other physically. And so, they were really engaged, positive interactions. And, you know, at first we started to do these in-person things. It was like, all right, we're going to train for three days and blah, 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 do study this and enablement role plays. And we kept scaling it back. We're like, all right, we got to better optimize for the social aspect because that's what's important. And I think the important thing about, you know, remote work's all about trust. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's it. hard to build the trust remotely. Because mm-hmm. how do you build trust? You build trust by th- showing vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And being remote, you always have these opportunities to, sh- to be vulnerable. And so... And touch points. Those- I talk a lot about touch points. You know, like you come into the office and your hair is all messed up because you did an all-nighter. I know, oh, Ryan right. stayed up all night. We're, like this all... You're just taking in all this information that builds up the trust. Right. You know, that yeah, you're talking exactly. about, right? Exactly. You, you can't do and that. And creating moment. those interpersonal, those moments where you do show some vulnerability when you're in person that allows you to have the trust to have a difficult conversation, which you ultimately need to be in business. Wow. it's a lot to think about. Tell me more about your consulting work. I'm interested to hearing more about that. Yeah. I mean, I don't do a lot of it now. You know, I get, you know, speak at conferences and stuff like that relative mm-hmm. to, and I do some workshops. A lot of it's based on culture. Because again, okay. that's one of the hardest things to do. I has a million tools out there. There's all sorts of different, you know, books and guides and all that stuff. But culture is the hardest thing to manage, maintain in a remote world. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, speaking from experience with some of the things that we did in Envision and some of my other experiences, I definitely have some things pulled from the that Rolodex. Have been successful <laughs> in terms of, you know, helping people address it's sort of addressing some of the concerns that people have with remote. Like, for example, ah, remote work. There's no water cooler brainstorming. Really? You know, like that doesn't really happen. Once you get beyond a certain number of people, like that never really happened anyways. (laughs) I love it. it. Thank you so much. The water cooler. Can we get over the cooler? Because because it's a lot grosser than you think, too. That's the other thing. Like, if you've ever had to change the water bottle and, you know, you get your finger stuck down in there, it's slimy. It's gross. So there's a whole, and then like behind the water bottle, there's like this wet, soppy sit of water that just behind it. It's just disgusting. I don't even know why I'm going down this path. Yeah, you spent some time with the water. (laughs) (laughs) But the way like at Envision, we addressed something like that was we just had like a safe word that was just bad version. You know, Clark, and it was just a safe word. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is a good idea or not. But yeah. bad version, boom. And again, you're giving people yeah. these safety little triggers to be more proactive in throwing out ideas, which a lot yeah. of times in remote, people are like, I'm not going to say anything. There's like 20 people on the Zoom. I don't know this person. I'm not saying right. shit, you know? And it's like, you got to develop these little behavioral norms for people to feel comfortable. And so right. like bad version was one or, um, yeah. I don't know if you ever know, like unconscious leadership. The whole concept of above, below the line. Yeah. Um, it's like a two minute YouTube video, but basically above the line, you feel great. You're in the right frame of mind. Below the line, you're not in the right frame of mind. And so, like, gotcha. we had literally stickers, like, with a line and vision where if you got into a call, like, you don't know what mental state somebody's in. You don't know if they just oh. had a fight with somebody or whatever. But you could come onto a call and be like, hey, you know what? I'm a little below the line today. Can we push this meeting? And I was like, boom, no questions asked. 
totally safe. Below and so again, giving these people these things to just like mm. think about, um, give them some more safe space in a remote world mm -hmm. to help them have a kind of a free culture that's going to keep them engaged and positive. Well, that word keeps coming up in our conversation, culture. Yeah. I think it's often the most overlooked and to a certain extent undervalued yeah. element of being an adult professional. I think that a lot of us have just been pushed so far into, uh, you know, working at a cube farm and signing your life away yeah. at all hours of the day. And then, you know, we get this major crisis and everybody just has to react. Right. And I feel like this is something we could have had a long time ago if we were more conscious mm. of people. Does that make yeah. sense? It does. Yeah. It does. And that goes to the overarching trust issue because, you know, again, to the study that we just did, people are now spending on average an hour a day pretending they're online because they think their manager's watching. People yeah. are wasting an hour a day yeah. with what we call digital presenteeism. And that's a trust issue. You know, they're not given the trust from the organization to work asynchronously or work off hours, whatever. And so people are actually faking and, you know, having Slack on or whatever on, even though they're not working an hour a day, like that's a lot. And so that's an underlying, again, foundational trust issue. So it's those types of things that companies need to be more assertive and overt about addressing to give people the comfort. Or people were saying like 70% of people say they, they feel the need to respond to emails and Slacks after hours. Oh, and right. that shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't right, be the case. No. Like, it, right. Maybe there's certain situations there can be, and maybe for certain companies and, you know, there's wrong, but like companies need to be a lot more pres prescriptive about the behaviors and the way you work. Setting expectations, setting yeah. expectations is something that absolutely we're always doing with clients when we're speaking with them. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges yeah. with startups and small businesses as far as like, okay, and, I, and I'm sure larger companies too, but a lot of times with the smaller companies, they're just go, 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 go. We got to get the next thing done. There's not a time to, to stop. Let's take a moment. Let's explain. Let's right. agree that this is how we're going to work. Um, it's those expectations. I have a question in regards to like where you see us heading next, right? So you've been a part of the Envision time, you yeah. know, prior to a lot of the technologies being out. So you probably experienced some challenges with Envision. Now you're at Catalog, which is a platform that, you know, yeah. satisfies some of these challenges sure. as a digital hub. And I'm yeah. sure you've taken some lessons from Envision and brought them over to Catalog. Hey, we yeah. tried this. We did that. You also consult a little bit. So you're seeing some of these businesses, like some of the challenges. What's next, right? Like recently, Apple is, you know, going to try it again, return to the office again right. for like right. the 10th time. What do you see Ryan is next? Where do you see this remote thing going in 2024, 25? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think there's a couple things. I think one, when COVID pushed everybody to, to work from home or work from everywhere or whatever, there was this explosion in productivity tools and, you know, a million different SaaS things. And it had the opposite effect. Now, instead of sitting at your desk and having like five people come by and ask if you want to go for coffee, now you're getting pinged by a million different tools. So people on average are getting hit by, you know, six different tools a day. And so there's going to be a reckoning. Like companies are now learning that their knee jerk reaction to try to support employees from a productivity standpoint was an overreaction. And now they're going to have to distill that down and audit things like their tools and audit the way that they work. So I think there's going to be a reckoning and an over and a, cause there was a little bit of an overcorrection in my view. I think there's still going to be a, a time and place for the in office and companies that do have a, a vibrant in office, like that's great. Um, they're just going to have to learn to change the dynamic of that to, you know, make it a little bit more around the social context and not just around the working. And you know, so do you I, think hybrid is it? Like, it seems to me all the news is saying hybrid, 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 hybrid. What's your thoughts? Do you feel like hybrid is actually going to succeed in the long run? Yeah, I don't like hybrid. It just hybrid feels like it creates the haves and the have nots. It depends on the A and the B team. 
Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> you've been on a conference call where there's 10 people sitting in a room. <laughs> or you've been on a Zoom where there's 10 people in a room and you're on the Zoom and you, you, know, you don't, you know, like, there's, there's no connection to that. Like, even at Envision, yeah. if there were 10 of us in a room at a WeWork and three people dialing in, everybody in the room at the WeWork had to be on their own computer. Like, yeah. I mean, playing field one, had to be even. One person on Zoom, you're all on Zoom. I feel like that's an OG move right there. Yeah, exactly. I think we'll see the rise and uh, obviously the company offsites and those types of uh, those types of vehicles to drive the in person engagement. But again, I think people that you know companies that have the big in office presence, yeah, they could probably persist as long as they're accommodating to the folks that don't want to be in there. And that's going to be the real challenge because to me, I think just the hybrid thing is just really hard. It's either fully in office Super or fully hard. remote. Hybrid just feels like you're you're straddled online. Yeah, you know, sometimes it creates confusion. Yeah, I would think. T totally, totally. Yeah, because then you don't know what, and that's where the rise of async work comes in. Because people are in an office and they have a meeting or whatever. Where's that information go? Like sticky right. notes, you know, like freaking <laughs> sticky notes. Give me a break. Um, you can't so do sticky notes anymore. <laughs> that's where the tools come in, you know, and the tools need to be. There's so many tools out there, but they're not. Companies aren't enabling people on how to use the tool, but also like when and how to do asynchronous work. Right. And that's a big challenge because yeah, everybody's got a different definition of asynchronous work. I think companies have their own definition and that's fine. Uh -huh. You just got to be overly prescriptive on what it means for your particular company and what the rules of the road are. And then leadership needs to lead by example. I think that's one of the biggest thing that we see right mm. now. It's like mm. a lot of these leaders are saying, Hey, we've got to have boundaries take your time off, but then they're answering emails at 12 o'clock at night or whatever it is. People need to lead from the front and they need to exhibit the behaviors. And and then they didn't set expectations, right? We're going to do right. async because to me, I like, I don't like the idea of, um, I think I've heard Europe trying to make it, you know, illegal to send email past a certain time. I couldn't remember yeah. if that act, yeah. did it, did they finalize that? I can't remember. And my thing kind of goes back to what you were talking about, Ryan. It's, set expectations lead by example but at the same time if we're going to do this async thing right yeah i'm i may have to send you an email at one in the morning but i don't expect you to respond right. and on your side turn your damn notifications off it's not my problem right exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like right, like right. if we're going to do the damn thing let's do it right. instead right. of yeah. just like eh, well maybe I'm a right. dumb -dumb -dumb -dumb. Uh -huh. just it, <laughs> I just, yeah. I don't know. It just really agitates me because it's to me, I, I can't, oh, you email me and that notification, you wake, you woke me up. I was like, well, bro, turn your notifications off. I right. had coffee. I was up all night. Just decided right. to get some work done. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's just setting those expectations in an SLA. Like we created, we had somebody on our team from Atlassian and they brought over, we had a great, we developed a way we work document. And it was like detailed, you know, cameras on, on Zoom. But it was, do we celebrate birthdays? Do we use nicknames? Like, mm -hmm. and we just got it down on paper as a team. And that's just sort of there. And so when any new employee comes on, they know like how we work. What are one-on-ones for? When do they use? Like, and just giving you some behavioral parameters because everybody has parameters on, you know, the computers you use, the tools you use, the training that sure. you do. But they don't have as much on the behavioral expectations other than, you know, sometimes slapping some values on a website and being like, yeah, you know, have integrity you know right. it's like no what does that mean <laughs> integrity right. wait wait let's do the let's do let's play this game okay so what's the next word on every value statement you go first ryan you already ownership. picked integrity be an owner or be an owner or some level of ownership or act like an owner or something <laughs> how owner. about you rick what do you got lead by example yeah. <laughs> yeah. um um <laughs> truth <laughs> You know, <laughs> but there's some young person coming in from their, you know, maybe it's their first job in tech world. They don't know what that means. So you, gotta, you gotta be, you know, prescriptive. Yeah. Agile. <laughs> <laughs> Candor. Yeah. yeah. So since we're in a jovial mood at the moment, tell us about a comical or inspirational moment that you may have had or something that sticks out in your mind when you were working remotely. Yeah, I've got a few comical ones. Like, and we did it. You know, again, I think I think before. Let's have it. Let's let's go rapid fire. I mean, you got you got seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, there was one easy one where like I was sitting in a chair and like a Zoom of like three hundred people, and I like leaned back and my chair broke, and I went <laughs> down. 
and like <laughs> only like a few people saw it. And all of a sudden my direct messages on Zoom just started like, did that really happen? Is anyone recording this? And I was like, oh, please no, please no. Uh-oh. And it didn't get recorded, so that didn't show up. Um, um, let me ask you, as in that moment though, like were you just kind of rocking and like when you rocked back, you just overdid it and just, were you head over heels type tip over? Did it kind of like, did you, you know, do a rock and just fall on your side situation? No, it, I, the back of the chair broke. I was on this flimsy wooden <laughs> chair sitting in my garden in London. And I went back and I was sort of like, if you were going to put your feet on the table, the whole back of the chair just snapped. And I went down. Oh, and oh no. There's like 300 people on this call. And like, again, a few people saw it. And they're all like hitting me like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I mean, were you bleeding? Was there dirt in no, your hair? No, Did just, you spill the wine? Pride. Okay, just, cool. Just pride. pride. Okay, that's cool. Um, just pride. There, there, were, there was one uh, hiring was funny. Uh, I got a hiring note from somebody on my team that was interviewing a potential salesperson and in the notes, it's like, oh, this person's this, 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 this. And at the end it was like, wearing green underwear. And I was like, what? And so I talked to him, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? He's like, well, I was interviewing this guy and one of the interview questions, questions that we used was, you know, what's the latest business book that you read? And the guy's sitting here like this. And so he gets up to go grab his book off the bookshelf <laughs> and he's wearing fluorescent green speedo <laughs> no oh my pants. god no <laughs> come home baby there it is canada there it is canada bring it home oh and it was in the interview notes it bring it home and, uh, oh my god <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh um, there uh, was- out of curiosity did the person get hired did not did oh and it wasn't because of that it wasn't i know we all that. know it's hey it's not because of the shorts people it's not because of the shorts it wasn't because come of on that. there there was one one other quick one i'll tell you we had a um this was early days but they, in another company but they um yeah everybody was on call da, da, da. not everyone had their cameras on and um uh my boss starts presenting and all of a sudden you start hearing this noise and the noise is getting louder oh no and everybody he's like everybody go on mute and the noise is getting louder. And he's like, what the heck? And he's like, starts looking at the names. And this guy, this poor sales guy, must have had too many drinks the night before. So he fell asleep, head on table, and was snoring into the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> head on table too? And I was so well, you couldn't see him, he had his camera. couldn't see him, okay, yeah. okay. So I but assume, he's, he's and, snoring so loud and everybody's trying to hit him and be like get off put your put yourself on mute we had to cancel the meeting you cancel the meeting you would got would the be- shit roger this is work time <laughs> <laughs> get it, it together rog yeah. it just tips the table over my goodness gracious put on your damn cpap machine roger damn it i can hear your in- innards rattling I'm getting real tired of your shit roger <laughs> That is great. What a oh, story. Oh, classic. that poor bastard. That poor bastard. <laughs> yeah, we get a, I got a few from the days, but yeah. Oh, that's man. a good one. That's a good one. Ryan Burke, thank you so much for joining us. This has been an awesome conversation. Uh, I thank wish we could so go much. longer. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having yeah. me. This has been a blast. I th- thank you. Good, very good. Much. No, we're glad we could make it happen for you. Um, tell our listeners where they might find you. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely plug catalog.com. I'm going to plug you for there. My, you know, uh, Twitter is just at Ryan S. Burke. Um, and Ryan Burke Remote is uh, is the remote consultant. Fantastic. Awesome, we'll come back and see us again soon. Yeah. Yes, man. Sorry about the reschedules too, bro. Sorry. We all rescheduled. Good. So all you know, we rescheduled this guy literally six times. He has the record, and it's all our fault. First time. We just messed it all up, but I appreciate you being flexible, man. Honestly, all good, yeah. all good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool, cool. Thanks a lot, man. Later. You've been listening to the Remotely We Are One podcast. Visit us at remotelyone.com/podcast for upcoming episodes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and download our episodes on your favorite podcast app. Hey, hey! Don't forget to clock out. <laughs> <laughs>